thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well, it's time to put our tail lights in, but you know, we're not just going to put our tail lights in. First, we're going to talk about some uh, basic electrical circuits, Ohm's Law, we'll do a little math, we'll do an experiment, and then we'll install the lights. When we talk about basic circuits, we really have two kinds of systems. We have the first kind of system where the load or the light bulb or whatever you're putting in a circuit is wired right between the positive and negative on a battery or your power source. If it's AC, it doesn't really matter, so you have one wire, or you have something called a chassis ground. That's when the negative side is hooked to the frame of the vehicle like we have in the Cobra, and any load or anything you want to run is hooked up to the positive side of your fuse panel or a relay or something like that, and then that is run to the ground or the chassis. And I'll show you what that is later. Alright, now I have a, a standard 12 volt car battery. This is a 650 cold cranking amps with up to 810 at 32 degrees of F reserve capacity of 130 amps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a short circuit and a short circuit is when you have a direct connection from your negative lead to your positive lead on your battery. That's what causes your fuses to blow. That's what causes wires to melt. That's what causes all kinds of things to happen bad in your electrical system. Now I, re I recommend you don't do this at home. This is very dangerous and, it's, and it can cause uh, explosions. It's very hazardous but I'm going to do it for the sake of our experiment. Now I know from experience when I touch this side of the battery to this, uh, this wire, and I have just a standard 14 gauge wire here, when I touch these two together, this is going to get really hot. And I have an infrared uh, meter here, and I'm going to see how hot this gets. Right now, just to show you, this wire is about 72 degrees. 72.8, about 72. And I'm just going to hold it, I won't be able to hold it on there long, a second at the most, and we're going to see how hot this gets in a very short period of time. Then we'll look at Ohm's Law to figure out why this got hot. Okay, ready? There's going to be a lot of sparks. I'm going to see how long you can hold it there. Okay, it, it was pretty hot. Okay, measure the temperature of this now. And now, whoo! It's hot. Now it's up to. It's hot, so hot I can't even hold on to it. 140 degrees. So this wire is actually up to 140 degrees because I created a direct short between the negative and the positive on the battery. So it gets really hot. So it's still pretty hot. All right, now I have here another wire, and this is actually a thinner wire than the other one. So I have the same thing. It's about the same length. This wire is cooling off about the same length, and I'm going to do the same experiment. Now, I'm going to short these right between the two, and I'll put the positive over here to the positive and the negative. And what do you think is going to happen when I do the same thing here? Do you think it's going to get really hot? Let's see if it gets really hot. Well, let's first let's test the temperature. Uh, temperature of this is 75 degrees. Okay. Now, I'm going to short these out. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to short it right to the battery. Uh, make sure I got it hooked up right. Positive and negative. Ready? Ready for the spark? Hey, there's no spark. How come there's no spark? I'm, I got a smaller wire here. It's not getting hot. I measure the temperature. 70, 76 degrees. It only went up one degree. Let's see if I can measure the light bulb. Light bulb is uh, getting up there to 87. So here I have a direct short, and what's the difference between just having a wire there and a light bulb? The difference is we have a load, we have resistance. So let's go and figure out why this doesn't heat up and why the other one did heat up. Now the formula you're going to use with most electrical circuits is Ohm's Law, and it's simply a formula. It's E equals I times R where E represents the volts, I represents amps, and R represents resistance, which is measured in ohms. Now we're going to use Ohm's Law to describe what happened, why this wire melted, and why this one lit up, okay? First of all, we got our Ohm's Law, E equals I times R. Our battery is 12 volts, so 12 volts will be constant through both formulas. Amps times resistance. 
we're trying to find out how many amps we are trying to push through this wire. Now, a 12 inch piece of 14 gauge wire has a resistance of 0.005525 ohms. And if we work that out, we're looking at roughly 2,285 amps. That's what calculates that can go through this wire. However, our battery was only 800 amps, which means we were trying to push 800 amps through a 14 gauge wire that's really rated for 20, they say 15. Only 20 amps is supposed to go through this wire. I was trying to force 800. So what happens is, when you try and push that much current through a small conductor like this, you're trying to force all this electricity, it has nowhere to go, it get, heats it up, and all the energy is given off like this as heat. Heat is the result, that's why it got really hot. I'm trying to cram 800 amps through a small conductor versus this. Now the difference between this is, this wire have, has a load in it, and the load is the light bulb. But, so let's figure that out. 12 volts is constant, this is a 3 watt bulb, and it convert watts into amps. We take uh, watts divided by volts, comes out to a quarter amp, so we're only pushing a quarter amp through this bulb, and the resistance works out to 48 ohms. So we have a 48 ohm resistance circuit here with the light bulb versus 0 0.005525 ohms in a wire, and this only drew a quarter of an amp. That's why it didn't get hot. All of the energy gets taken up in the light bulb, it heats up the filament, and that energy is given off as light. So what is meant by a chassis ground? Let's assume this piece of metal here is the frame on your vehicle. And this is the wire that goes from the negative terminal of the battery right to the chassis. Just like when you hook up your starter, you run the negative wire from the battery to the chassis, then in order to get that ground to the engine, you run a ground strap from that lug all the way to the engine. That makes sure you have a negative or a good ground to your engine. So we look at the chassis here, and if I take my positive side and hook my, now I have my chassis wired here, I hook my positive side to my battery terminal so that every anytime I hook up the the thing I'm trying to run here, and I hook it up to my chassis, it's autom automatically ground. So this is a chassis ground. No matter what I put here, if I put a switch in line, it's going to work the same way. So this is called a chassis ground because I have this piece of metal hooked up to my negative, and no matter what I hook up to it, as long as I hook the other end to the positive side of my uh, fuse panel, or a switch, or a relay, whatever, I'm going to have a completed circuit and my device will work. So why is all that math important and understanding all that? Because whenever you're hooking up anything in your vehicle, whether it's a light, maybe you're installing a stereo system, maybe you're putting in some LED lighting for your under your dash or in your wheel, whatever you're doing underneath. Um, it's important to understand that because you have to protect the circuit with a fuse. And it's good to know how much current that circuit will be drawing so you know what size fuse to put in the line. That's very important. So it's pretty simple math. You can figure it out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go install this light uh, and this light is a ground, it's a chassis ground, but it has two wires. Why does it have two wires coming out of it? Well let's take a look. Now the way this works is there's two filaments in this bulb. That's why there's two wires. But you, you can see very clearly there there's a lighter or thinner filament on the left and the thicker filament on the right. There are two filaments in the light bulb and the two wires get hooked up to each one of those connectors on the bottom. So this filament runs to one of the connectors on the bottom and the other one runs to the other one and the outside of this is the ground. The green wire goes to the filament which is thicker which is for the brake light and the turn signal. Since the filament is bigger, it's going to allow more current to pass through, so I would expect that one to be brighter than the yellow. The yellow is for the daytime running lamp, and that filament inside there is smaller, so it's going to be dimmer. So let's ground this out, and we'll see how bright the brake light is. See how bright that is versus the daytime running lamp. See the difference? Okay, see how small that filament is? And see how big that filament is? More current gives off more light. They both have the same resistance, smaller filament, less light. Okay? 
So that's why you have two different size filaments in your light bulb. Let's go hook it up. Now that I have a ground wire hooked up from here to the frame, to my chassis, I'll just hook these wires up temporarily to the wires coming in. We'll give this a try. I have my ground wire here hooked up to my chassis and the two wires hooked up to the circuit. So first we'll try our blinker and the blinker, there's our blinker. We'll turn off the blinker. Now we'll try our running light, those headlights. There's our running lamp and now we'll step on the brake and there's our brake light. Let go of the brake brake light goes off, we still have a running light. There we go, everything works perfect. And on the outside, let's do our turn signal. Okay, our turn signal. We'll turn that off. And then we'll turn our our daytime running lights on. And we'll step on the brake. So there we go. Turn on the blinker. And there we go, everything works perfect. Alright, there you have basic automotive wiring and Ohm's Law. Now if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button so you can stay up with all the real cool projects we do here. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.